This one is going to be D. Uh, do, 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 do. So if I, if I pivot it about that point, uh, I put the D becomes uh, one fifth L, right? One fifth L, which changes this to one twenty fifth. Uh, so you multiply by three, you multiply this by three, that's three plus two is five, five seventy fifth. So I'm doing it kind of fast. Five seventy fifth, which is one twenty fifth, right? So alpha will change. So if you do the reverse way, alpha will become mg for, uh, okay, let me, you know what, let me put it this way. Let me put the, so I'm doing it here. I'm pivoting it about this point, but the center of mass is here now, right? So my alpha is going to equal, this distance is going to be uh, one-fifth, um, uh, yeah, one-fifth L. So on top, instead of having four-fifths, I have one-fifth L times mg divided by, and then down here you have 275th ml squared plus 125th L squared. Let's see what happens there. This is 3, this is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 over 75 is, uh, 5 over 75 is 1 15th. <laughs> 15 goes up there, you get 3. 3 G over uh, L. Oh, that's huge. Look at how alpha is huge. And I knew it was going to be that way because we now reversed it. The concentration of mass is down here. And the moment of inertia of this thing is uh, smaller than a uniform rod. Okay? Because uh, most of the mass is close to the, close to the pivot point. So now the alpha is going to be 3G over L. And imagine what's the tangential acceleration of these little kids over here. Okay? A tangential at the end is going to be this times uh, L. Wow. That would be a fun ride. Imagine little kids down there, phew, when they're horizontal, they have experienced 3G forces. Okay? So it's kind of interesting to play with the physics of that. <clears throat> Now, the other kind of question that we can also ask about this same situation is, we can ask the question, what's the velocity at each point of the rod as it's falling, okay? For example, by the time it goes from the here down to here, what is, its, what is the velocity at each point? Each point will have a different velocity, right? The point I'm holding has a zero velocity. Well, it's just uh, standing still. The further down you are, the higher the velocity you are, you see? So how do we answer the velocity question? So let me erase this here. Let's answer that. So let's go back to the uniform rod. And then, uh, again, center of the concentration of mass is the center of mass. You're holding it here, a distance d. So what's the velocity there? So let's say by the time it goes from vertical to horizontal, each point is going to have a set different velocity again, v tangential. Like that, just like the acceleration, okay? And then the V center of mass is going to be right there at the center, and then V the tangential end. 
Now, how do we answer the velocity question? Now, the velocity question, the best way to answer it is to, from an energy perspective. You can argue that if the potential, if, if there's no friction, let's say in, if there's no friction in the fingers that you're holding it, then you can argue that the potential energy that it has here is equal to the kinetic energy when it has there. Potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final. Now here is where this is tricky. This is probably the trickiest part of this problem. Most people here, they would put potential energy is mgh, so that one's easy. The trickiest part is this one, kinetic energy. Most people are going to want to put half mv squared. That's where they go wrong. Because that's the kinetic energy formula they're used to. Okay? And they're thinking to themselves, each point of this rod has a tangential kinetic energy, right? Half mv squared, half mv squared, half mv squared. So that's why they're putting that formula. But it's completely wrong if you do that. The reason why that is wrong is because each point of the rod has a different velocity. You can't just put half mv squared. Okay? Each point of the rod has a different velocity. This point is going faster. This point is going. And then plus, what mass are you going to use here if you do this formula? Are you going to use the mass of this little part here? Are you going to use the little mass of this little part here? You can't do that. Okay? So what formula for kinetic energy should I use for this object? Well, here's what you should consider. The object as a whole is rotating. You see? It's actually, there's no translation taking place to the object. Now, here's what, uh, what would happen if there was translation taking place. Uh, next week, we'll get to this kind of problem. Uh, you'll see next week the problem such as this. I'll show you a problem where uh, an object is going like this and hits another object and then bounces off. Okay? And it hits the other, uh, it hits the rod away from the center of mass. Okay? Then that, uh, what's going to happen to that object, the uh, ruler? If a, if a little ball or something comes and hits a ruler, then bounces off, that ruler will now tra have translational kinetic energy, and on top it will have rotational kinetic energy, you see? So it's like taking this and, let's say, play a little pool here, hitting it from the, away from the center of mass, okay? Both translation and rotational kinetic energy. Okay, so the translational kinetic energy the object has a translational kinetic energy only if the center of mass of the object is moving in a straight line. Plus it has rotational kinetic energy because it's rotating at a rate of omega. Okay. So its total kinetic energy is equal to what? Half mv squared and that's the velocity center mass. Now what mass do I use here? The mass of just the little thing, that, that little part of the rod there? The answer is no. You can assume as if the whole mass of the object is concentrated at its center of mass. So you can use here, you're allowed to use the total mass of the object. The total ma you can assume as if the total mass of the object is concentrated at that point and it's moving forward at the velocity center of mass. Then on top of that, because the object is experiencing rotational motion, okay, then it has rotational kinetic energy equal to half i omega squared. You see? So this is a case where the object has translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. So then I'm going to, uh, we're going to solve problem like this. And then the last part of the problem is going to ask you a question like this. It's going to say, what's the total energy at the end point? Uh, what's the total uh, velocity at the end point?